motivation, inspiration. It's all bullshit without taking action. International best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, tough love, no BS, high-performance coach with an attitude. Welcome to the Queendom, where we talk about proven strategies to scale your business and scale your mind for ultimate success. And here's your hostess, cash flow queen, Kenitra. Greetings and peace, family. Q here with another fantastic episode. We are finishing up with Quantum Manifestation. This is part number five. So before we get into uh, the last part of our sequence, let's dive into the present moment. Let's get connected with the divine. And let's bring our awareness to the present moment. So we'll take a couple of deep breaths before we get going here. And let's begin. Mm, beautiful indeed all right so let's dive right into part number five quantum manifestation and we are uh, reading from energetic institute out of australia the visualization or intention process of co-creation or manifestation as one can now see the path of being a manifesting person or co-creator with the universe is not a simple or easily available one. Unfortunately, one cannot live a couch potato existence than one night per week put on a DVD about the secret or other uh, of the offered and packaged solutions to manifesting that the New Agers promote and flag with great success. If they had to spell out the hard work to clearing the obstacles and blocks in the body-mind, to being able to fully utilize or give effect to the tools that they offer to the purchaser, many would pass, as it's all just too hard for many. Given we live in an age of laziness and lack of discipline, coupled with the panacea and demand for the instant quick fix, it's no, no wonder many transformation gurus have sprung up to offer inviting and simplistic solutions. The tools and processes they offer are in many cases sound, but there is normally a missing context, and that is the blocks and the obstacles that naturally arise in a person wanting to step into such a spiritual discipline. Marketing pressures dictate that any negative or overhead that accrues to a product or a service purchase in our society be downplayed or put into fine print, as it gets in the way of selling the appeal and the image of the product or the service. Spiritual products and services are marketed no differently, in my opinion. Ultimately, the work of becoming a conscious co-creator in the universe is in the realm of creation spirituality, which empowers the person to see their interconnectedness to all things, to act in this way and to become an active and a positive co-creator with the universe. The Western tradition of creation spirituality under such mystics as Thomas Merton, Thomas More, St. John of the Cross, uh, Meister Eckhart, and works such as The Great Cloud of Unknowing are a solid basis on which to turn one's mind to reshaping one's outlook and reality on life. It's also a useful path to develop and cultivate higher states of consciousness such as compassion, love, and the wisdom of seeing the truth of the interconnectedness of all things. The Eastern path that best serves this purpose is Buddhism, and in particular, the Mahayana Buddhist schools of thought. Mahayana. Sorry about that. The teachings on emptiness are a direct correlation to many aspects of the quantum physics views expressed in this article, 
and other teachings on loving kindness, compassion, understanding the mind, and Buddhist cosmology give deep and powerful frameworks from which to develop creator archetypes within oneself and to remove body mind internal database old states of information. In both the Western and the Eastern traditions, the primary method of rewriting consciousness and developing the creator reality is based on meditative or contemplative practice. In quantum physics, the body gives us a location in space, and the mind which creates the concept of time gives us our point in time. The process of visualization meditation tricks our reality loop by putting into the reality loop new information that will consciously create and feed into this process. Science has already shown that our mind does not discriminate between what our senses read in from the external environment and what our mental awareness consciousness creates in meditation, visualization, or contemplation. Both are as real as each other to the mind. Given the mind works in images, then the most powerful of these techniques is creative visualization. Here the meditator creates a mental picture of a reality and tries to sustain that image in a stable and concentrated way in their mind. A parallel thought process that analyzes this reality and then draws a conclusion about that reality which one then places all concentration on, is another way of rewriting the body-mind internal database. It has been proven over thousands of years by numerous cultures to affect deep changes in the body and the mind over time. Recent advances in neuroscience also support these meditative practices. Neuroscientist Alvaro Pascual Leon proved in studies that when human beings learn a new skill, Plastic changes occur in the brain by strengthening existing neural connections or by creating new neuronal pathways and connections. His studies showed that those who do a short, sharp burst of study or practice, such as trying to manifest, will feel some initial gain as the brain channels that skill through existing neural pathways in a plastic way. However, such gains are quickly lost and the skill does not stay embedded as the neural pathways used are not dedicated to that task but are guns for hire in that moment that accomplish the task and then go on to some other task. Real change involves slow and regularly committed practice that actually signals the brain to create new pathways and new connections which will test the person as they feel inertia, resistance, and slow progress while the neural reorganization is undergone. This is the basis to changing existing neural pathways of our body-mind distortions from childhood and to create new realities. Sustained practice, <coughs> excuse me, sustained practice solidifies learning and rewrites existing neural circuits with new connections. Thoughts create the basis for material changes in our brain. Pasquale Leon showed in studies that people who did visualization practice of playing a piano or doing gym workouts, when compared to people who did the physical equivalent of the same practices, showed the same brain changes in the same regions of their brains and developed competencies similar but not as great as those who did the physical version of those exercises. When the visualization group then did the physical, physical exercise. They only needed one third of the time to reach the same physical aptitude as those who rely solely on physical means. In an activity that is solely about our mental and energetic impact on the quantum field, then the visualization method is the beginning and the end of this type of process. From a neuroscience point of view, imagining an act and doing an act involve the same motoric and sensory areas of the brain. Visualizing an object tricks the brain into thinking you are really seeing the object. This is the start of manifesting. Create the image or the intention and let the brain change your experience of reality so you feel that it is real. All change must firstly come from inside us before it can objectively start to be manifested out there. We've already adopted this reality of the mind to intercept the reality loop 
and decode electrical signals into machine instructions that mechanically create the reality out there. By this, there are now machines which paraplegic people use to tap into their thoughts and to translate their intentions into commands for the machine to do simple activities such as driving a PC mouse or move an object or turn a wheelchair into a new direction or alter it at its speed. Manifesting our reality is already occurring via using our reality loop in a biochemical way. Imagination and action are truly integrated in the brain-mind paradigm of us humans. In a spiritual sense, it is often said that the universe is in the, gra in, in the grain of sand or that the universe is inside of us. What I think those mystics are saying is that the laws of mechanics that drive our own personal realities are microcosms of what drives the universe on its majestic scale. If that is the case, then how imagination drives action will have its parallel in how imagination and intention can drive manifestation at the universal level. The mathematical patterns of the universe may then exist from the microcosm of us up until the macrocosm of the universe. This is simply stating um, one of the seven hermetic or Tehuti laws, which is as above, so below. So we are the macro microcosm of the entire macrocosm. Neuroscience also puts forward a powerful argument as to why the practice of imagining and visualization can affect changes within the person conducting such a practice. Neuroscience researchers such as Pasquale Leon note that mental imagery, visual images, and bodily actions can all activate the same motor programs in the brain. Thinking of an object, looking at the object, and actually physically interacting with the object can cause the neuroplasticity of the brain to create new and repetitious neural pathways in the brain. Our plastic brain is perpetually altered by every physical encounter and every visual or imagined interaction. The practice of visualization and intention can create good habits, and also our current unconscious habits, which are not all good, are having the same effect in our brains, notes neuroscientist Michael Merzenich. The brain structure that regulates instinctive drivers and behaviors is the hypothalamus. It is plastic, like the rest of the brain, and will utilize a lose it or use it principle on key drives in the body. Habit repetition enlarges the pathways for more of the same habitual activity and enlarges brain maps or circuits used to activate such drives. New realities and new habits are learned or acquired as the brain is exposed to novel or exciting experiences, much like how visualization and meditation stimulate the brain centers and shapes the creation of new neural circuits. These circuits are then feed into the reality loop. Neuroscientists have shown via research that an early life emotionally charged event can have laid down into the brain of a child the potentiality for the latter adult to respond with a strong addictive charge to a seems like, feels like reenactment of such an event. This is why we have so many conditioned mind scripts from childhood that may be maladaptive and no longer serving us as adults. These mind scripts, which create our attitudes, beliefs, reasoning, and conclusions about ourselves, others, and life, are those which currently serve as information in the reality loop to create our current reality, whether good or bad. In neuroscience, any possible formative experience will shape the brain that will later shape a person's identity via neural pathways. Creating a deepening of neural pathways and embedding new neural pathways is best achieved by the person generating deep emotional states around the object they are envisioning. Neuroscience shows that such an emotionally charged state is responsible for creating the basis for a deepening of that person's neural circuit and impulses towards a possible intention or reality. This use of emotion in medita meditation and visualization then releases GABA, an opiate, like endorphins, which neuroscience now tells us provides the protein and chemical basis for the laying down of new neural connections. 
The brain always responds to what it believes is positive behaviors for this chemical reason. Murinsik and Dosh argue that our brains are being reshaped by the highly stimulated nature of society, with consequences for that person's neural connections and their reality by becoming wired up to these sensations without a conscious intent to do so or becoming hooked after voluntarily doing so. For example, a 2001 American MSNBC survey found that 80% of viewers felt they were spending so much time on internet pornography sites as to be putting either their relationships or their jobs at risk. These viewers had stumbled onto adult, adult pornography sites, become addicted, and now were compulsively doing so without being able to control their impulses. We're all being unconsciously shaped each day by the assault on our senses within the highly visual, overstimulated nature of our experiential focused society. Not all these changes are good for us. Not all these trends in society are understood in terms of neural changes they create within us, and they all work with the same mechanisms that one would use to consciously create positive changes in one's life. The opposite pole or position of using the mental processes actively to create change is a natural state of dreaming during sleep. When we are asleep and dreaming, the only sense consciousness still operating is the mental subconscious process where, via image, our dreams arise during sleep. This shows the image-based reality of the mind or mental consciousness. Many people do not remember their dreams, but they effectively are processing information found in their subconscious about themselves and their reality. Images and symbols are used to convey truths as the subconscious cannot lie. Intriguingly, the concept of space and time are believed to dissolve during sleep as these are conscious states of mental reality. Under quantum physics, theoretically we should have access from this dreaming state, have access to past, present, and future states, experiences, and information. Dreams are often the basis for premonitions about future events. There are recorded instances of a person dreaming of a past setting where they hide something, which upon waking, they actually are able to then be able to go and uncover and describe with great accuracy. This information could not have been known from other sources. These documented accounts seem to support this quantum physics principle. Dreams are a rich source of material for a therapist and give access to deep inner truths that the subconscious may be trying to make conscious, or the dream may state the truth of where someone is at in an aspect of their life. This information is the same information feeding into that person's reality loop from an unconscious source within themselves. It's my belief that the body-mind-based therapy approach combined with a meditation approach can achieve deep results for Westerners over a shorter space of time than if only therapy or only spirituality approaches in isolation are adopted. This combination of techniques is able to assist in the reality shift from the unconscious to the conscious and from the victim to the creator. This path will transform the negative and aggressive lower self energies into the personal energy field so that they become positive aggression energy for strengthening the energy field and therefore strengthening the personal transmitter of one's intention to the universe. Remember we talked about that electromagnetic field that is, is like um, our cocoon and we're always emanating either a high vibration, high frequency, or low vibration, low frequency. And so then that's what attaches to us in our reality. So if we're emitting fear, anger, depression, jealousy, and all of those low vibration feelings, then our reality loop is going to feed us more experiences to give us that particular feedback loop. So you have to really, really be mindful of what it is that you're emitting from your energy field. The therapy model was never required in Eastern culture as they never suffered a body-mind split in thinking, culture, science, or lifestyle. As the East has embraced the Western approach, we are now in this generation starting to see the same dysfunctional outcomes and illnesses of body-mind in Easterners that have plagued the West for the last 150 years. 
For example, depression was largely, largely unheard of in Eastern cultures until about the last 20 years. <clears throat> Body-mind health calls on a break from the limited reality we all can so easily and unconsciously fall into, and worse still, fall back into if not vigilant. Spirituality, like any form of development, needs to be viewed as a journey and a process, not a milestone or event or endpoint focused endeavor. Neuroscience points to this long-term reality as being the basis of ingrained and sustained learning. For you to become a conscious co-creator or a manifesting person, the required changes must actually become part of your reality and so becomes a constant, a part of who you are, not just something that you do, for else you create a new split in yourself between you and your spirituality. This is another duality, another split, and to be avoided. The principles of neuroscience and quantum physics can be seen to underpin much of body-mind psychotherapy. In Buddhism, the non-dual and direct acquisition of a truth is called a realization and replaces more temporary conceptual minds about the same idea or truth. Quantum physics is still evolving, discipline that looks at universal truths and the implications that arise from these truths. Man today more than ever needs a way out of the suffering caused by the flawed belief systems, institutions, sciences, and social norms that are underpinned by, Cart by Cartesian thinking and the separateness we increasingly find throughout our lives being contracted into. With the pain that we try and hide with damaged addictions, coping behaviors from anxious and depressed minds. The gift of the paradigm shift that quantum physics offers and of the synergy that body psychotherapy brings to the breaking down of old ways, as well as the empowering man as his own creator in line with this quantum physics view, is a unique gift to mankind at this point in his or her evolution. The creation of a mind that observes reality with conscious presence and clear intention is a powerful force. It is but one input into the quantum collapse process that works along the lines of probability causing the popping of waveform into particle form reality. It is not the sole attribute or only influencing principle and it's not easy to get to such a place as the New Agers and transformation guru con men would say and market their claims around it is however a far better place to live from than from that place of being unconscious or a victim in life as a great buddhist saint shanti diva states who you are is what you have practiced before and who you will be is what you practice now ultimately it's all up to you so this was a beautiful um, piece, beautiful series here about quantum manifestation. And uh, it took us five parts to get through each piece. Hopefully you've enjoyed it as I've enjoyed it. I've learned a great deal uh, from different perspectives. And um, just like anything that is worth obtaining, or um, a new desire or a new characteristic that you want to obtain. It is worth the effort and the work to see it manifest. And this is why so many people suffer. So many people suffer because they're not willing to change. So, so many people suffer because they're, they're, they're lazy, they're undisciplined, and they're not willing to put in the work to actually see the change take place before their eyes. And, and my, my highest truth is what other reason are we here? Or I'll just speak for myself. What other reason am I here than not to fulfill my highest potential what other reason are you here like that that that's always been a question that i've had in my mind 
ever since I was a kid. And I used to think that it was just because I was competitive, in which I am competitive. But my, my competition is with self. It never involves another being. It's with me. It's with the older version of myself, the yesterday version of myself. So for me, this is all a game. This is all a part of the journey. What, what is laziness? Like, like, what actually is it? It's just something that we, we made up. You know? If you're, if you're on this, this um, infinite journey of potentiality and this infinite journey of, of seeking, like, where do you stop? <laughs> It's like, it's like, how do you get to the end of the internet? Like you don't. There's, there's always more. There's, there's always more. There's always deeper. There's always growth. There's always expansion. That's what we're here to do, in my humble opinion. So if you resonate with that, Hopefully you will take these episodes and put a plan together for yourself and start to tinker away in the laboratory of your mental space and start to create, start to create, paint away Picasso, paint away. Peace and unconditional love. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe via iTunes and Google Play for upcoming episodes. If you're committed to scaling your business and life to the next level, book a free strategy session with Cashflow Queen Kenitra by visiting the website, nobscloser.com. Again, that's N-O-B-S-C-L-O-S-E-R.com. Again, visit nobscloser.com to book a free strategy session today.